Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. It's Jen on Acre by the Creek. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make your own free plants. There are many propagation videos on YouTube and today I'm telling you straight up, this is not one of them. I'm gonna be showing you multiple ways of how I've gathered free plants and how slowly over the years I've been able to grow my garden and my perennial beds. Watch to the end of this video and I'm gonna give you 10 new ways to make free plants. I have a friend who has been watching my YouTube videos. She was so kind to call me and say, hey, I have some extra plants I'm thinning out this season. Can I give them to you? Um, Please give them to me, dream come true. So thank you so much, Carrie. It meant the world to me that you reached out and that you gave me some of your plants. So I'll go ahead and show some of those to you now. Carrie was kind enough to gift me with some salvia, brown-eyed Susans, and also some cone flowers. They're not in bloom yet, but they are perennial here in zone 6A, and they grew really well for her on her property, so I'm hopeful that they'll do the same here on mine. So after Carrie reached out to me and said that she wanted to gift plants to me, it kind of got me thinking, and I'm like, man, so many people I know have garden beds. I bet you a ton of them are thinning out every season, and I wonder what they would say if I asked if I could have some of their plants. So I decided to go to my sister and I asked her, I was like, hey, you've got some really neat stuff growing back here. Can I have one? And obviously she's my sister, so she said yes. And it just kind of broke the ice for me. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. If you have friends or family and you're at their house and you're thinking, wow, this is a really neat plant. I would love to propagate it or dig a little bit up and take it home. Just ask them, chances are they're gonna say yes. So one thing that I wanted to mention to you guys is obviously I'm taking these plants for my sisters. I'll be over at my mother-in-law's getting plants. And if you're someone who just moved to a new area and you don't have friends and family close by or you haven't made friends yet, um, it might kind of feel like you don't have options like I do where you can kind of take from your friends and stuff um, But I encourage you to just like join Facebook groups um, I feel like there's a Facebook group for everything now and like I know for me specifically I'm part of gardening groups as well as my town that I live in has a Facebook group So you just kind of have to be I guess a little bit not shy a little bit outgoing and just put a post on one of those groups and say hey I'm new to the area um, I'm really trying to get my garden established if anybody has anything that they're thinning out or any um, plants that they're willing to part with you know let me know and I'd be willing to take those off your hands and plant people get plant people they're gonna be happy to share with you especially if they're already gonna be getting rid of this stuff and you might even make yourself a plant friend in the process so I know that sometimes it's kind of intimidating putting yourself out there, but doing it is really usually going to end up being worth it. So um, I implore you to just try it and um, kind of rip off the band-aid. Also, my mother-in-law has been great for years. Every time she thins beds out at home, she's always gifted me her old plants. So we're actually gonna head up there. Um, she sent me a text message and said that she had some lilies and some other things that she was thinning out. So we're gonna go pick some stuff up. Um, honestly, so many of my perennials have already come from my mother-in-law's property. She always gives me plants. Even before I was like super into this whole gardening thing, she was always helping me out. So thank you, Terry. I love it and I love so much that you're always willing to give to me. <laughs> thank you. We have some lilies and then this really cute, dainty, like kind of ground cover thing. She had sent me a message saying that she was thinning these things out and I'm really excited to get some new and different things. This is also where my hostas came from and this is where my ferns came from. So every time she thins, she gives me little gifts to add to my garden beds. Okay, now this one might seem a little bit obvious on how you can make your own free plant is by seed saving. And I say that really gently because I've always been super intimidated by seed saving and I am not gonna claim to be an expert here whatsoever, but this year I'm gonna try my hand on it. I kind of decided to do it by dumb luck. I was deadheading some of my marigolds in the garden and when I did that, the seeds were right there. So I just had to think, wow, like these are right here. How silly would it be to get rid of them? 
So I put them in an envelope and then I got really excited and I was like, okay, what about my pansies? I know they need to be deadheaded. How can I get seeds off of these? So I looked up on Google, how do I save seeds from pandy, from, goodness, how do I save seeds from pansies? And I found it and so I'm gonna wait until the plant is in that stage and I'm gonna start saving them from there too. I'm not gonna try to save seeds from every single plant, but if I see something, shoots up seeds like my spinach or like I saw the marigold seeds. I'm gonna try with the pansies. I'm gonna definitely try to save those. I definitely feel you if you're a little bit intimidated by the whole process. I am too. I'm gonna learn alongside with you and I will share every single tip that I learn along the way so that we can master it together. Okay guys, so my tip for you on how to make free plants is when you're making your budget and allocating how much money you're gonna spend on plants, consider buying things that you know you can make more plants out of. So earlier in the season, I fell in love with this Indian summer coleus. It's a proven winner's plant. It's absolutely gorgeous. And when I brought it home, I knew that I could make more plants out of it. Coleus is a really great plant. You can take a pinch from it, propagate that, and then your original plant will bush out and then their little pinching will be a whole new plant for you. So it's just like a gift that keeps on giving. So I started this process a couple of weeks ago with this Indian summer coleus. And I just went ahead and took a little pinch off of the plant. You just wanna go back a few leaves and then pinch it right here and then you can take this portion inside. Um, I'm not gonna take another pinching off of this one, but we are gonna go inside so I can show you how the one I pinched off is doing now. Okay guys, this is the coleus plant that I pinched off about a week and a half ago. And this is how many roots it's put out since then. Let's see if I can get it to focus, there we go. So now I can take this pinching and plant that and then I'll get a whole new little coleus bush out of here. Okay guys, so I'm over at my sister's right now and there's a couple plants that I wanna get here. Um, I have her permission to take these plants, so that's kind of the biggest thing. If you're gonna take plants from someone, make sure that they know about it and that they're okay with it. Um, but she has a hookara here and then we have something else up on the side of her house that I might end up taking. But first I'm gonna dig out this hookara. If someone that you're sharing plants with just got a plant and the plant's not well established yet where you can kind of thin it out and take a section for yourself, you can also just take a clipping of one of the leaves and then you can propagate that and then that could be a way that you could get that plant into your yard without really taking away from what they've done or what they just got. So I'm gonna try to take from the back of the plant. I don't want the front to end up looking like it was messed with because of course it's part of my sister's landscaping. Um, so I'm just gonna take from the back and just try not to disturb the front too much. And I just kind of spread out a little bit here and you can see there's a base of a plant right here. So I'm gonna try to take this one out. So you can see just how easy that was. I got the rhizome here, the root portion of the plant and so I'll just stick this in at home and it'll start growing for me. And then these also tend to spread. So I will get more wherever I put them. Now I am gonna be here for a couple more hours before I go home. So I brought a bucket to put some water in just so that the root system doesn't dry out before I go home. and it looks like I didn't even touch them. I never come out here, I never even realized that she even has hydrangeas out here. But the reason we're out here, she has these really cute little trailing plants. So there's this one, which has like a green and white variegation. There's this yellow and green variegated vine. Now I'm not gonna dig these two out, um, the root systems like I did the other ones. I'm just gonna take a couple of snips off of them and then I'll put that in water and propagate them that way. And now this is the white and green one. Okay, so these are the cuttings that I just took off of those two little plants. And one thing that you guys wanna note, wherever you're taking your plants from, just try to pay attention, like what kind of light are they in? So these were up on this little hillside and it's in shade most of the day. So when I take these home, I'm gonna plant them in a similar, similar location at my house where they'll be getting some shade and I know that they'll thrive. I even wonder, I'm gonna run these through Google Lens, but I even wonder if I can keep these as houseplants and like overwinter them. Something tells me that I can. So 
um, I'll probably end up doing that too. And I just spotted another variety of coleus here that I don't have at home. So I think I'm just gonna take a pinch of that home so I can propagate it too. Okay, so one last thing here at my sister's, we both started our own seeds, but we started different things. You can just do like a seed swap, so you guys can start whatever seeds you wanted to have out of your seed packet and then trade them for whatever they didn't use, and then you can like raise your own seeds that way. Um, but the way that me and my sister did it this year was we both just started our own plants and then we ended up switching now. So she's got a couple of pepper plants here that I've been painting to take home for a while that I haven't, um, but I'm gonna take those home and then a bunch of her stuff that's in her garden is stuff that I started and a bunch of stuff that's already planted in my garden are things that she gave me so it's a really good way to kind of diversify without having to buy so many things like doing a plant swap once your seedlings come up or doing a seed swap before you start them is a really good way to use them and diversify your garden even more. Okay guys, my tip on how to make your own free plants is to just kind of go after varieties that you know are gonna spread easily. So like I showed you up next to that long bed up front, I have ferns. Every year those set out shoots and spread and I end up with so many more. They look a little bit dainty now because I actually thinned them a little bit earlier this season and they're kind of still rebounding from that. But I guarantee you next year that bed will be completely full again. Um, you're gonna see how they look from my mother-in-law's and they're totally filled in over there. So if you give those plants the room to spread, they totally will. If you get hostas, eventually they will get nice and big and you can take a little cutting out of there and put it in another spot and then that one will grow a new plant and give you more hostas there. So just look into varieties that you know are gonna end up giving you more plants later and also things that are perennial in your area. Getting started with these really good foundational pieces that you know are gonna spread and fill in your garden beds and then throw annuals in every year and it lets you experiment with different textures and colors and things like that until you figure out what you really like or if you just like to do something different every year but basically if you always have those foundational pieces coming back every year your budget is going to be freed up to do different things for example in my new bed that I put here at my full sun garden bed um, I didn't have any perennials there because it was a brand new bed so I bought a lot of annuals to put in there but I also sewed bulbs in so that they would come back every year. So just kind of thinking of things like that. Definitely having perennials is really helpful and allows your garden to spread without you even really having to think about it. And even better, without you having to spend your money on it. Take those plants that you know come back every year and that spread and move them to a different place. So if you know that they're coming in and they're spreading in this certain area of your garden, you can take a few out and put them in a new bed or in a new section of your garden. And then those are gonna keep coming back. So pick from other people's, but also pick from your own and just kind of spread things out that way. Okay, so my eighth tip for how to make your own free plants might be a little bit controversial, but it won't be as long as you do it the right way. If you are in say like a forest or you're driving down country roads and you know that's no one's property and you see something there, maybe you could take something from there. So even if it's just a little pinch um, and then you can go home and propagate that plant. I urge you, do not take plants from people's properties that you do not have permission to take from. I think the socially acceptable term for this is called foraging. So if you can go out and you have a place where you know you're allowed to forage, go for it and take plants from there that you're allowed to take. But again, please, please, please do not go onto people's properties that you are not allowed to go on to take plants. Only forage where you know that you're allowed to. We're back inside here and really this one requires basically no effort on your part other than just keeping your plant alive. So some varieties of plants like cactus or succulents will have a mother plant or even a pilea and it will send off babies. So as long as your mother plant is nice and healthy, it will shoot out a little baby and then you'll get a free plant right there. This one has put off babies. So I'll just show you this here has been the mother plant. This is one of its babies. That's another baby. And this one is another baby. So this one mother plant has given me so many babies and I've done nothing to get them. Obviously you can propagate your succulent plants. 
there's a whole process that you can go through to do that but if you're someone like me who really doesn't want to propagate or you have so many other plants to take care of that you really don't need to make more your succulent will just put off babies and you'll get your own free plants that way really with zero effort other than keeping the plant alive this is a palaea often known as a chinese coin plant i don't have any babies off of it yet but the really neat thing about this plant is that i know that it will shoot off babies so when it does this planter will just get even more filled in just kind of a side note guys this is a really fun house plant to have it grows like crazy like i said it's like two or three months old it started with just three tiny little leaves and it has grown so much. So if you're also into house plants, I really recommend this one. It's so cute and it's so much fun. My last tip on how to make your own free plants is by giving strawberries room to put runners down. All of these things hanging off here are runners and these could all become new plants. Hanging them in this hanging basket has not been the ideal way to make my own new free plants. Um, they're not necessarily going to waste right now, but they're just not becoming plants yet. So I'm definitely gonna get a new bed for these strawberry plants to get into. They can spread out. And I have this one planter that we purchased once and we will get new plants year after year coming off of this one planter that we purchased. So definitely giving your strawberries room to spread out is a great way to make your own free plants. If you're someone who really likes to know the name and all of the details about your plant, a really nice app that you can use on your phone is called Google Lens. And basically it just scans a picture of your plant and it will tell you what it is. You can then go into Google and Google, you know, what kind of light requirements or watering or drainage or whatever your question is, do I need for this specific plant? And you will find your answers right there. So I highly recommend using the Google Lens app. It has seemed to be fairly reliable for us. All right guys, it kind of looks like we've got a storm rolling in. I've got all those plants in the trunk of my car that I gotta do something with. But these are my 10 best ways of how to make your own free plants. Without even realizing it, I've been using these methods for years, but I was thinking about it, I'm like, wow, I should really share this. I feel like these are things that people want to know. So definitely ask your friends, ask your family, go foraging, propagate your own plants, whatever it is, just make your own free plants and grow your garden. You don't have to have a huge budget, or even if you do have a huge budget and you wanna spend that on other things, then do that. But learning how to do these things and learning how to make free plants in your vegetable garden as well as in your perennial and floral gardens is so much fun and so beneficial. So just always remember, if you're making your own free plants, share the love when you are going to thin, if you have a friend who's starting out, whatever it is, seed swap with them, give them your thinnings, whatever it is. Like I said, post on a Facebook group and say, hey, I have a bunch of free plants that I'm not gonna be using. I just thin them out. Who here wants them? I guarantee you someone's gonna hit you up for those. So anyways, I thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me. Bye guys, I'll see you next time.